Hi, everyone. It's Arthur here at Arthur Is Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurIsYourMind.com. And tonight it's Aloha Tuesday, so that means we've got somebody with a Hawaiian shirt on. Hello, Mel. Jeez, look at that be. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. I wonder if it was Mel. <laughs> so how, nice. you? How, was your, how was your trip? <clears throat> it was good. We went down to St. Croix, and when I was down there, I was checking out venues um, for a possible retreat in October of 2025, right around Halloween. And I found a venue. It's really cool. Uh, and it would be like um, three or four days. The hotel, if we bring in X amount of people, they'll give everybody special rates. And uh, it'll be really neat. So that's um, that's this Halloween or next Halloween? No, uh, no, uh, 2025. 2025. Okay. Right. <laughs> but I am excited about our Chicago event coming up in September of this year. Uh, when I talked about it on my show the other day, I said seminar, but really it, it's it's an urban retreat. Uh, it's going to be Thursday evening, September 26th, a meet and greet. Uh, we'll have appetizers, hors d'oeuvres. Uh, we have non-meat options. Linda will be signing books. We'll have um, <clears throat> a really neat MC, somebody I'm probably doing their show right now. <laughs> um, so Thursday evening, that's the meet and greet and welcome and all of that. And registration's at 4.30 and then it'll go until like 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Um, then that's September 26th. All day Friday, September 27th, we started, we will have like a breakfast. It'll be like bagels and a parfait bar. And then we'll have classes from nine until noon. And then from noon until 1.30, we'll break for a buffet lunch, which is included um, with non-meat options for those who don't eat meat. It's going to be really neat. And then we'll resume again at 1.30 and go until 4.30. And in that evening, uh, Deanne will give a talk on oils, and we might even be able to twist <clears throat> Arthur's arm and have him do a little talk for us, too. <laughs> um, he is going to be our MC. And then um, we'll be doing all day Saturday, the same time frames. You know, the breakfast, 9 to noon, then lunch from um, noon to 1.30, afternoon session, 1.30 to 4 30 and then our closing ceremonies that night um people are asking will there be readings done and the groups yes linda when we do this she reads for everybody in each of our groups so every group will have a chance to talk to and take a class from the presenters so i'm going to teach psychometry and mediumship linda will do her readings uh kevin lewis does mediumship kim copeland is going to do uh, talk about meditations and angels. And uh, Kevin Chandler will talk about healing and Reiki. And so um, it's exciting. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot. So I it is an urban retreat. It's more than just a seminar. It sounds full packed. It is going to be full packed. So I'm excited about it. That's so cool. if you're interested... You can call my office at 847-590-5411. And I'm going to talk to my web designer. I have them put a, a page on my website for it. We just we just got the venue settled. The play, We just got the venue in the early part of March. We weren't sure if we could get it on certain dates. So we're a little bit late getting started. but um, And we've only got room for 50 people. So it's first come, first serve. So 847-590-5411 or email me, uh, go on my website. That, that's not up yet, but you can contact me on my website and ask about the uh, the urban retreat in Chicago at www.meldor.com. So there you go. And if anybody wants a reading with this incredible guy, they can go there for that too. Oh, thank you. And they, Arthur is also incredible. So I try. <laughs> <laughs> we try so also a lot of comments 
Happy belated birthday, Mel. Thank you. And happy belated birthday to you because you just had one Sunday. You were the 22nd. I'm the 24th. And today is the day my mother passed away. Oh. Uh, in uh eight years ago in 2016. So God bless anyway. you. So I feel they're all around me today. Oh, that's great. Um so how old are you? 39 and holding, huh? Well, I don't have birthdays. My twin sister has the birthdays. I just say the same. Oh, I got <laughs> good job. <laughs> no, I think between the two of us, we're now 134. Just I tell everybody, I just turned 70. So, hey, I don't know what it feels like to be 70. I've never been 70 before. I know. I'm surprised I made it this long. <laughs> Well, I'm surprised I made this long too. But, <laughs> so when people say, what's it like having a twin sister? It's like, I don't know. She's always been there. I do have to ask one thing of people in the comment sections, when you leave comments, please keep them positive. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if, if they are nasty or on the mean side, they do get deleted. Um, you know, we do this because we want to help people. And part of the way we we are able to do this is because we have our retreats and we're able to promote them to help people. Um, and we'll have some less less expensive ones in the future. But please, everybody, you know, if you're if you're going to make a comment, please keep it positive. It you know we we emote and we have feelings too, and we try to help everybody. And so, um, I'll leave it at that. Well said. <laughs> so dear mel you're a wonderful person thank you so much next arthur just left this note here <laughs> anyway so you want to go to some questions i'm, open to, to I'm open to positive i'm open to positive suggestions yes not positive criticism because positive criticism is really a negative well no that's called destructive criticism not constructive right. criticism <laughs> Well, I'm open to positive suggestions. How yes. That? Yes. All right. So you ready to buy your uh, God bless the USA Trump Bible? Is it written upside down? Just across. <laughs> Remember when he held that Bible? <laughs> well, how about when he held the uh, the pride flag upside down as well? Oh, I know. <laughs> um, you brought up something before the show. <laughs> That this is a good one. Um, first of all, that bridge that collapsed in Maryland. I understand what happened was it was a it was a container ship that hit the the support, the bridge support, and caused it to collapse. Um, and Secretary of um, Transport Transportation Buddha Judge immediately is getting uh, money expedited to to take care of the issue. Unfortunately, there were six people I don't I don't think that have been found. I guess my question was, why was that ship going that fast? And, and you know, I mean, any any bridge would have probably collapsed if something that big hit its main, you know, main support. So the law of physics. But you said something that um, just Satan and some people are saying about Buddha Judge that I think is cruel. I think it's anti-gay, and I think that they should apologize to the American people for their comments. So go ahead, Arthur. Even George Santos, they're all blaming the bridge collapsing because Pete Buttigieg is gay, period. And the stuff that's up there, the vitriol of how do you want to, do you want to become the uh, next Department of Treasury? You married to a man or a woman? Oh, married to a man? Okay, you can have that job. Do you breastfeed or chest feed your kids? I mean, it's just obnoxious. You know, it, was, it was just a question of when they were going to, you know, they were picking on the transgendered people. Now they're picking on gay men. It, it, was, it was just a question of when. But for but George to, Santos? But to say that that bridge collapsed. Yeah. Because Buddha Judge is gay or whatever they're saying is just a total crock of BS. It collapsed because a cargo, a container ship, it's humongous, hit a main support and the bridge went kaboom. 
Yeah. You know, it's sad that people died, but Buddha Judge is getting aid there as quickly as he can possibly he get was, it there. He was there that like with the first responders, just he's right there. You know? And his sexuality has nothing to do with it. At least he was there. He wasn't in Puerto Rico throwing paper towel rolls to people, was he? Or remember all those times Elaine Chow showed up to things? I don't right. either. Or or when a hurricane was hitting, he didn't take off to where? Where did Cruz go when the hurricane hit? Where was he? Cancun? I, I guess what, who, did that, who the judge didn't do that, did he? Yeah. So. Oh, and there's a, we can go on and on and on. It's just go on it and on. really but set me off. Y'all, and the hypocrisy just blows me away. But anyway, um, at some point, I think that we will have a gay president in our lifetime. And let's see what the Satan has to say about that. But it was George Santos that made the comment. Right. Of oh, George people. Well, oh, George. I, I'm sorry. I thought you said De, De Santos. De Satan? No, George Santos. I'm sorry. I stand corrected to Satan. George Santos. Well, hello. I mean, he said he needs to turn in his gay card. Excuse me, Mr. Santos. He didn't take anybody's credit card and use it to buy stuff that. And, and then his mother's, the other person's mother's credit card. Thank you. Or he didn't, you know, he didn't take ill-gotten gains or money and then steal. No, he didn't do any of that, did he? And now he's running on a, as an independent, he says. As a what? Independent. Is that before or after he's extradited back to Brazil? I don't know. I don't. He's he's a buffoon. But anyway, and the other thing that came up. Apologize, I thought you, I thought you meant the same. Well, you know was, what? He probably said the same thing, believe it, because they they all share right. one brain. So it's still horrible, and I and I find it that in this day and age, anybody would be. It's I find it offensive. It's really offensive. Yeah, they think it's funny. It's not funny. It's offensive. Um, the other thing that went down today, though, was at the Supreme Court. I'm sorry. Say again. The other thing that went down today was regarding the Supreme Court, the hearing about the abortion pill. They're not going to ban the abortion pill. I can tell you that right now. It'll probably be a seven to two. Um, well, a lot of them were saying that because it was these supposedly MAGA doctors who brought it to the Supreme Court. And, you know, it was very simple. If you don't want to prescribe the pill, if you're a physician, then don't prescribe it. But they didn't have, so the Supreme Court is saying, how did how did that damage these doctors? Like the doctors aren't being able to show, show any damages because well, of the lawsuit they're bringing. So my my question, I my feeling is this: the court will say that the abortion pill is still going to be marketable. <laughs> well, the other thing I was getting at, I was talking to a friend this morning about it. And I said, look, this Supreme Court got rid of Roe versus Way, saying it's up to the state. Now they're going to take an abortion pill and make it a national removal? Well, because they're trying to backpedal because of Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. um, and they can't just kick this back to the states. I talked about this the other day because it would be a nightmare. But you know what? I see what's going to start happening is these big drug companies are going to start saying, wait a minute, you are trying this crap with us. We're going to put our money in supporting candidates who yeah. are going to help promote our product. So, yeah, it's like you don't mess with big pharma in this country and you don't mess with Mickey Mouse. Now that the Satan did. Thank you. <laughs> That's what um, I brought it up. And also you heard about uh, Ronnie McDaniel with NBC. A river dare she run on. So long, farewell. <laughs> yes, so long, farewell. She's not there anymore. Well, I think all the anchors were just going bad shit crazy, pardon my language. That's okay. And, and, uh, and Rachel Maddow just went nuts for 29 minutes on it. Oh my God. And so did Lawrence McDonald or whatever his name is. And then uh who was it? Uh Morning Joe said that he should never be on their show. And um and Chuck Ta was the one that really vocalized it first. But I've got a question. Um, I, I forget the head of the NBC News, Caesar or something or another. 
I wrote in my notes, it's going to look pretty bad for him because he hired Rob. And I wonder what's going to happen to him. My feeling is NBC is going to be trying to get rid of him. And he will be going by the wayside very, very soon. That's what I see. Yeah, what do that's you think? a big oops moment. No, I see him gone. No, I'm done. I do too. I see him out of that job. So, wow. Time will tell. Time will tell. So, drum roll, and he, let's go to some questions. All righty. Jitterbug22. I love that name. Every time I see, you know. I, I smile. I, I've been doing this for years, and every time I hear Jitterbug22, that name, I just, it makes, I, I love that name. <laughs> we love you, Jitterbug. Jitterbug. I keep hearing George Michael, too. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, Auntie Mal, and hello, awesome Arthur. The GOP yeah. is, again, trying to undermine the 2024 elections. Hold on, hold on just a minute. I'm sorry. I, I did something here. I screwed up. Give me a... Okay, go ahead. Do I get my sock puppet and entertain? No. <laughs> Do you I, I what I'm doing wrong here today. It's all I, the eclipse energy. That's all it is. I don't know what it is, but I wish it'd get better because I'm all like... That's the eclipse. Everyone's been off. Seriously? I thought it was just me. Mm -mm. I, thought was, I thought it was because I just turned 70. Yeah, you like the yogurt in the back of the refrigerator expired. And it's just because you just turned um, 30, uh, 40, uh, 29, uh, however old. Whatever it is. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I turned 30. I turned 30, 37 years ago. 30 years ago. <laughs> I gave you a break on that one. I know, Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's what did you about two to have to say? <laughs> The GOP is again trying to undermine the 2024 elections by putting election vigilantism to in intimidate voters. Will <laughs> anything be done to counter these people? Thanks for these collabs. I can answer it in two words. Go figure. <laughs> I'm in a cocky move today. Um, Especially in Arizona. I think the I think as long as we speak up and say that they won't take away our voting rights and that we have a voice, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the MAGAs are still going to try, are still going to try to mess with people's voting rights and individual rights, even though they say they're for individual freedom, excuse me, not they'll try, but you know, people will still keep speaking up and calling them out on it and say, we're not going to stand for this. And ultimately I see an end to this MAGA movement. So thank goodness for that. Unfortunately, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So I do think a lot's going to be good done to counter, as you say, jitterbug, these people. <laughs> a lot will be done. Well, I get there also may have down line put in place, like somebody cannot stand so close. Like there's a proximity where these people can stand. It's supposed to be that way now, but I think they cross it. But I was teasing a friend, and you know what MAGA really stands for? Mel Arthur, greatly appreciated. Yay! Well, <laughs> um, you know, it's it's kind of like modern day Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we How many will jelly beans. We'll intimidate voters. We'll do this. We'll do that. Now, if now here in Illinois. When you go to the polls, there's everybody passing out elections, you know, flyers. Mm -hmm. They can only get within X amount of feet of the building. And if, if, if they get any closer, they get in trouble. So, you know, if I were going to go out and vote, I would be vote with a group of people. And I wouldn't be intimidated. I'd go in and cast my vote. I'd be like, no, I'm going to vote. <laughs> yep. So it's going to backfire. It's going to backfire. Yeah. I do see some some incidences of violence, not huge. It's unfortunate, Ruffles. but um, that's going to but those incidents of violence are going to make people that much more determined to vote. Yeah. So. Anyway. I love this next name too. flying without a broom. Oh, I've been down that road. <laughs> 3680. Aloha, Arthur and Mel. I love your show and your insights. I know the thought of entering X45's mind is a frightening prospect, but I wonder what does he truly think 
of the face staring back at him when he looks in the mirror. None. He doesn't have a moral compass. He doesn't have a, he does not have a conscience at all. He justifies everything and he, everything's transactional for him, but doesn't have a transactional value. It's worthless. You know, I like that flying without a room is coming from a place of somebody with a moral conscience mm -hmm. and coming from a place of someone who has a conscience. Trump doesn't. To him, the word loyalty, love, caring is like wood, block, pen. No, it's you have to be loyal to me. You have to love me. I don't have to love you. But also, yeah. when he looks in the mirror, what do you say? Hey, I look great. Yeah. I'm the greatest. Look at me. Yeah. I'm infallible. Look at me. They're, they're, look what they're doing to me. He's always going to make himself the victim and the martyr. And I always say, get off the cross. We need the wood. Or the bonfire. Or, or, for the, or for the bridge to get the hell out of here. There you go. Um, yeah. And we have. Oh, I'm Joyce Nima. Happy birthday to both. Uh, Rose Blue. Hi, y'all. She's from Texas. Hugs. <laughs> News from a Scottish chatter. Boxes taken from Turnberry Course Sunday morning by authorities. A, about illegal money sources. B, U.S. classified documents. Thank you. I, I don't think it's much about this. Of the boat, huh? I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about this one. I think it's both, actually. Yeah. I never heard of it before now, uh, Rose Blue, but I think it's a combination of both. I agree. And that's going to break. You know, uh, this is the first I've heard of it, but I've got cold chills. My guides are telling me this is going to be huge. This is going to be a huge breaking story. Good. Is this what we need? In fact, I'm so excited about this, and I'm going to screenshot it. Okay. Veronica yeah. won. Why is criminal Donald receiving so much special treatment? Um, I don't know if it's special treatment. Well, it is special treatment. Um. But that's gonna that's gonna that trend is gonna go the other way as well. You know, that money that I, I watched some stuff today. It's like, where did he get the money to put up um uh, that bond? Can he says, I got no money? And I you know, if he got it from his billionaire buddies here, where, did he put up the 175? I well, if he does, where did he get it? Because he cried broke. But but you know. He's getting scared because he doesn't have as much money as he made it led everybody to believe. But I'm feeling he's going to get some from foreign sources and from sources domestically, which is a threat to our national security. Because God forbid he does win as president and he will not. These people could come forward and say, oh, we did this for We're you. your creditor. Us. And so how much how much does it cost? To, how much does it cost to buy a president? One hundred fifty one hundred seventy five million dollars. Not even. Yeah. But now he's saying, oh, I've got plenty of money. I've got plenty of money. I've got... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if he says they have plenty of money, then why'd they reduce it? But a couple of weeks ago, he's crying broke. Yeah. Oh, it's going to come out that he didn't have as much as he said he did. And there's a paper trail, and this is going to be investigated before he got this money, I'm telling you. But he's also counting on the true social, you know, going, not IPO, but whatever it's called. I suppose he'll make money out of that, but I'm sorry, say so he'll make money out of what? The Truth Social. Oh you know, yeah, his, uh, the social the media tubes. things. I'm sure he got some money from that, but I see that going down the tubes. Yeah. Well, anything he touches. He he, you know, he's like a vampire. He milks it for whatever he can, and then he just leaves it to dry up, and and leaves the 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 pieces. You know, everybody in puddles. Yeah. Everybody also try to pick up. You know, he he creates willing victims. He really does, and mm. some unwilling ones too. <laughs> Odd yeah. Girl Scout. I think that's what this is. That was me. <laughs> I, I can just see you with a little sash. Uh, mahalo, <laughs> mahalo, Auntie Mel and audacious Arthur. Will the juicy Russian PP pee -pee tape and other disturbing Trump facts ever be exposed? How many countries had their hand up the puppet Trump's arse? Cheers. <laughs> Wonder where this person's from. 
Um, you know, I think more would have come out, but because Putin is the head of Russia, I think he suppressed a lot of it because he and Trump are tap dancing. Or he's um, even against Trump. Well, I've got this. Yeah, but Trump was pretty powerful as president, so he could try to use it against him, but he'd be stupid to do that right now. Mm. But um, but I still see some leaks coming out of Russia, a lot more, and a lot more incriminating stuff coming out of Russia about Trump, which will be true, by the way. So, oh, yeah. And not from spies, but from real people. I mean, yeah, the Republicans have all the spies. These will be real people. Josephine Schwartz. Oh, please tell me how Trump got away with the reducing of the. Reduction. I don't think he got away with it because he still has to pay interest on that money. Yeah, it's like eleven thousand dollars a day. But because what happened was, I think, and if I'm mistaken, correct me, is that they said while he's appealing, he had to come up with one hundred and seventy-five million. But you know, appeal. If 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 he wins this on appeal, it doesn't mean he doesn't have to pay it. It just means it goes back to court, and they have another trial. Well, if, he, if he loses the appeal, he's got to pay all of it. He's going to lose the appeal, and he's going to have to pay all of it. Yeah. Then he'll croak again. But um, it's a surety bond. But I want to tell you something. He's going to have to pay the four seventy five plus interest. Yeah. And if he opens his mouth about E. Jean Carroll again, she's going to sue him again. Oh, I'm telling you right now, they're going to sue him a third time. Oh, there's going to be a lot of people suing Roberta him. Roberta Kaplan is not going to sit by and let him. I'll tell you who else is going to sue him is this whole thing with Stormy Daniels, because he's going to be intimidating witnesses, judges. Uh, oh, you ain't seen anything yet. And a lot of people in that trial are going to turn around and sue him. But the Stormy Daniels thing is a criminal trial. That's not civil. Correct. And he's going to be found. He's running scared. You can tell by the way he's out. Oh, yeah. Because he, he can't talk his way out of this one. Nope. That he did it. Oh, he paid her off to save his family. Well, if he was worried about saving his family. Why did he why have enough with her in the, to begin with? But why was David Pecker from the National Enquirer involved? Exactly. Because they had to kill. Try to vilify Cohen. But, you know, Cohen will be able to hold his own, I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, he already is. He's already done right. his, he's already, you know, to quote his Maya Koopa podcast, you know, it's there. Know. Um, Donna Reeves. Um, hi, Mel and Arthur. Love you both. Because we're doing political stuff. We're not doing personal stuff. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Love you both. Will Pete Buttigieg ever be our president or vice president? He is such a great speaker. So smart and a good person would love to see him as president and a phenomenal politician at some point he will be president the answer is yes i feel okay i feel he'll, he'll always be steering this country in the right direction um, okay. even if he does <laughs> chest feed i know is he breastfeeding or chest feeding i can say that <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, you Sound jail? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah. Angie Ortiz, what does Princess Diana have to say about Charles and Kate's cancer diagnosis? I'm not going to talk about their, yeah. their diagnosis because they want to keep it personal. And as somebody who's had cancer, I... You know, I, it's a horrible disease and I think hmm, what if they want to disclose, they'll disclose. And I really don't feel comfortable commenting on that. I will say this, though, not to sound too, like, sci-fi. I'm going to say within the next eight years, they'll have nanobites to take care of cancer. I'm sure that they'll find a lot of monoclonal antibodies and things yeah. like that, even under control. Mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned about King Charles. Uh, his cancer, I feel, is pretty severe. Um, hers, um, you know, there's a lot of speculation as to was hers pancreatic. Is it this or is it that? You know, in the beginning when she went in, I didn't feel cancer and because they didn't see it. And then they just came back with, I guess they did, I don't know what happened or 
how it came up that she had cancer when it was another procedure. But um, that happened to a family member of mine. They I'm were sorry. running towards appendicitis right. when they, they found cancer. Right. It was, so it was 19. Sure, you know, I'm thinking hers is probably in the colon area. That's what I feel too. Um, but she's a fighter. Mm. And, um, you know, I think. I feel that she has a promising prognosis. Prognosis means likelihood of recovery. Mm -hmm. Feeling that same prognosis for King Charles, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. having, you know, I will send healing energy and prayers. I was going to say, we all must. Not just that, to them, but to everyone. Every right. To everybody who's got cancer. But I will send healing prayers and energy to Kate and to the king. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a very devastating disease. Yeah. Or can't be. Yeah, but, I'm sorry, I wasn't being cocky when I say they didn't want to comment on it. I just no, it's okay because sometimes people don't realize what we have to go through to get answers. Sometimes, and right. it's you get either sometimes after I've done readings, I even want to like you know hit Captain Morgan up. <laughs> My favorite. I just spirit don't want to put on their privacy. That's all. I'll take a take a shower. I feel dirty. They've got enough to fight, and um, yeah. So I'm when. Sure that I'm sure that Princess Diana is working from the other side oh, yeah. to, to give them the best possible care and medical help that they can possibly get. Right. Right. Wendy MM, will it be a GOP win in 2028 federal election? I don't see it. I'm sorry, say again? Will the GOP win in 2028, basically? Not if the MAGAs keep up their nonsense. Um, mm -mm. Uh, I see another political party coming on the scene uh, that would be more like a progressive party. And I see they're going to gain a lot of, 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 uh, of what's word I'm looking for? Of traction. Yeah. A lot of forward, a lot of momentum. Um, I think people like Liz Cheney and Nikki Haley, and I don't agree with their politics at all, but I think they want to bring back some of the old order Republicans before MAGA, and they'll be pretty successful with it. Like the but John I see, Kings. Right, but I still see a progressive workers' party coming to as well. Yeah, well, I will tell. I see after 2025, a lot it's of- really, This is the beginning of the end of the Republican Party as, as it exists. It. Under Trump. <laughs> so, is a question about NBC. We answered that. Donna Howard, is the government watching upon his grave site? I still believe there is something in the casket and within its walls and underneath the whole site. Well, they're not taking care of it. They had pictures of it where it was like all grown over with weeds. I'm serious. Oh, it was I know. Don't say it. Um, I, I never picked up anything in there, but if that's what you're intuiting, then who am I to that's question that? Asking. So I'm not sure. Thought. But I do think that other hidden documents will emerge from other places, like on the golf course in Scotland mm -hmm. and other places. Okay. Bernie Henson. Happy birthday to both Mel and Arthur. Will Trump's properties ever get sold at auction? Yes. Also, will the Supreme Court give into Trump and say he has total immunity? No. No. <laughs> the first one was a yes, and the second one was a no. With what went down with Trump only having to come up with $175 million, it seems like a lost cause for America giving him so much privilege. He is a citizen like the rest of us. Merrick had nothing to do with the 175 million. That that wasn't Merrick's jurisdiction. No, not the Department of Justice. New York that, State. That's New York State. That has nothing to do with Merrick Garland. Um, he, my guide, don't let this upset everybody. My guides tell me justice will be done, and I believe my guides. You know what this reminds me of? You go to you go to the movies. And everyone's going to die. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The monster's going to kill us all. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Then you'll remember. Oh, wait a minute. There's a happy ending. <laughs> I don't get popcorn. It's like, you know, 
my guys have shown me this all along for a while you know it'll look as if they win some battles a lot of battles but they will not win the war mm -hmm. keep that in mind this is not a win for trump at all it's just anything if anything i'd rather have if anything i'd I'd rather see him have to come up with a 175 and pay the interest on that. I don't know if he'd have to do it if he came up with a full 475. But the interest on it alone is going to be- It's $11,000 a day, 11,000 plus. Thank you. So start doing the numbers. <laughs> Let's hope that, that we can kind of stretch that $11,000 a day out for quite a while. So far, I can only get to 21. Um, but but he's not going to win that appeal. It's not going to happen. And if he does and goes to another trial, he's going to be found guilty on that trial too. So. And Sheila Saunders wants to know, hello, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Is Netanyahu trying to destroy President Biden? Mm, no. Netanyahu wants to hold on to power. And Netanyahu... He's not doing it on... Per he just wants... He's got ego. He's like a Trump. Mm. And Netanyahu, maybe is a little smarter than Trump, but is giving the middle finger to the rest of the world about the whole Gaza thing and saying, no, I, I can do what I want. You know, I'm very, very pro-Israel, but I'm anti-Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. And what's going on in Gaza is becoming genocide, and it's horrible. And it needs to stop, and it will stop. And, and I see at some point Netanyahu is going to be on trial for war crimes against humanity, the same as Putin will be. So that's what I see. What do you think, Mr. Arthur? Well, I, Netanyahu's going to do what he wants to do. Right. And, you know, to blame the U.S., for what they're doing, but what really irked me and just showed me the vile people that Gerald, Jared Kushner is, is when he's talking about, oh, good, this is going to be really great beachfront property in I Gaza. That's horrible. That is vile. Yeah. That um, just shows you what they think. That he's going to make money. At the, at, at, right. at, Take them away the so that we can build. Right. Well, um, that's going to bite him in the butt, too. Oh, well, I see more into his future and not as far as Let's see. Will Trump ever be held accountable? JC is sickening. Thank you. Yes, he will be. Yes. And not only in this realm. MEJ, hi, Mel and Arthur. What is going on with all the violence with teenagers these days? It's getting out of hand. Thank you. And the happiest of birthdays to you both. You know, they said that in, in our day. I mean, I'm a, I was a child in the late 60s and early 70s, and we protested and we marched. And, oh, my God, these kids are violent. Look at what they're doing. And we were just marching against things that were important. We thought that were unfair. We were marching against racism and bigotry and all kinds of stuff and equal rights. And uh, in those marches, there were a lot of um, agitators that were put in place by here again, some of the right wingers to incite violence. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think the kids nowadays are any more violent than what they ever have been. I do see an increase. The, the gun violence increase is just not acceptable. Um, and I see gun control legislation coming that's going to curb a lot of that. But, you know, for the most part, I like to think that the largest majority of kids nowadays are really good kids. And I like the fact that now the courts are taking things seriously. Yes. And bringing the parents in. Right. As responsible for the kids. Absolutely. Kids. Well, you know, when I was a kid, it was that way. If you did, if a kid broke the law then the, the law would hold the parents responsible. And so, you know, I think part of the problem is poor parenting nowadays. But, um, I mean, who in their right mind would teach their kid hatred and tell them it's okay to have an AK-47? I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, I in Kentucky, and my father had guns. And, you know, uh, there were guns in the house. They were never loaded. 
And, you know, all my uncles, they went hunting and fishing and all that stuff. That was the way of life. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But you don't need an AK-47 to, to shoot a rabbit or a quail. Mm -hmm. You don't. <laughs> um, and, you know, we were taught responsible gun ownership from the time we were children. And you don't play with guns. You don't have a loaded gun in the house. You, you know, when you have a gun and you're out hunting, you put the safety on, you know, all of that stuff. And I just think... Well, those you are the know. things that the original NRA used to teach. And then right. it just went bananas. Right. But they exactly. also passed a law in Kentucky that kids, depending that commit crimes with guns and all that kind of stuff, they're going to go to be sentenced as adults. Adults. Well, that's sad. Um, but we need to look at what caused those kids to commit those crimes. Right. Those crimes of violence. So there has to be responsibility, collective responsibility, and how did it get to that point? And those are the things they really need to look at. Um, I think education is the answer, but not the stuff that they're teaching nowadays that you can't talk about Black history, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. History. You know, education is the answer. And some of the MAGAs are doing everything in their power to destroy education. Rewrite you history. Know, and rewrite history. So you know, it's funny. We wrote the Bible, so. When I was in high school, I got in a lot of trouble. I'm going to tell you why. I was in a history class, and um, we were talking about the Bolshevik Revolution, and the history teacher says, well, yes. When the Bolsheviks came in, they rewrote the history books. And um, I raised my hand. I said, we didn't have to rewrite ours because we thought we got it right the first time. Sit down. <laughs> yep. Trouble. None. But it was true. I mean, come on. George Washington threw, chopped down a cherry tree and I can't tell a lie. I mean, those were parables. They had moralistic meanings they're throwing a silver dollar across the potomac it's like okay <laughs> but, crossing the delaware yeah right i get it <laughs> but, actually it's a beautiful painting though it is a good painting it's it's really a kudos to the artist yes yes and don't ask me who painted it i have no clue so much for my history <laughs> kenny kw4 Jenny KW4. Hello, team. Is Michael Cohen safe? He's been outspoken about Trump's crooked record. I'm sure that, you know, he's received some <clears throat> not so nice messages, but, um, and I'm sure he'll receive threats, threats against him and his family, but my feeling is he'll be safe. Yeah. What do you think? If they were going to do something, would have done it by now. Well. But he needs, Trump still needs them. Well, because Trump can blame him for everything. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, hmm. we're running out of questions here. There's something about, um, I'm going to pronounce everybody's name wrong here. But it's from Mako's dad. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Love you. Love you both on your shows. A non-political question for you in regards to Ellie Dodger's Shohi Atani issues with gambling. Uh, says his translator took his money and gambled. His Say that again. was not very convincing. I'm sorry, what was that again? An L.A. Dodger. It's a Japanese name. Shohi Atani. Okay. Supposedly had issues with gambling. And he's saying it was his translator that took the money and gambled it. <laughs> Want to buy the Brooklyn Bridge? I know. <laughs> That's what came through. I mean, I... Ask Pete Rose. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's it for uh, questions we have, Mr. Mel. I'm sorry? That's it for questions. Well, we got them all done, huh? Mm -hmm. Yay. All right, so um, this has been fun. So go to Mel's page, like, 
subscribe, and all that good stuff. The show's going to be going up on my page in about 19 hours. I'm just kidding. Um, but I'll put Hawaiian music before it. Next week. <laughs> no, I'll have Hawaiian music before it this time. Yay. Then, um, like, share, subscribe, and comment. And, you know, we love you all. And if anybody wants a personal reading with me, psychicarthur.com, or actually just go to YouTube at Arthur Ease Your Mind or ArthurEaseYourMind.com. Okay. And take and I suggest getting a reading from Arthur. He's amazing. I don't know which way to point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like Ray Bolger. <laughs> If I only had a brain. We can say that a lot of people nowadays. Yeah, right. Well, look at the politicians. <laughs> exactly. And we didn't even talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to oust Mike Johnson. Uh, well, we knew that was coming. <laughs> that was, we, two, we knew that one. one. I mean, why? Because he was doing his job. Yeah. All right, buddy. We will talk. Have a great one for week, everybody. See you Bye. later. Thanks, Mel. Thank you.